Here we go again. Oh, no, not again. You've seen it before, haven't you? Dom, how long have we been doing this? Once more unto the bridge. Dear friends. Well, again and again and again until we're both dead. Logan, but you've seen it before. Movie reviews to connect you to the mind. Meg to the Trench is the new sequel to 2018's The Meg. It is directed by Ben Wheatley and once again stars Jason Statham as Jonas Taylor, a uh, no nonsense, uh, you know, shark fighting uh, badass who, after the events of the, of the previous uh, film, has become a bit of an eco warrior, working closely with the researchers who are researching the trench as well as the megs that, and all the other light uh, sea creatures that live inside the trench when a breach in the uh, barrier is formed and multiple megs get out it is up to Jonas Taylor and his team to bring down the sharks. Now this video review will contain spoilers of the me uh, Meg to the Trench as well as certain other uh, films. Uh, do my spoiler free thoughts first and foremost uh, in this review, but just so you know, there will be some spoilers later on in this review, but uh, first things first, let's get into uh, some spoiler-free thoughts on Meg to the Trench. Is it worth seeing in a theater at all, or at all, really? Uh, and is it a good sequel to 2018's The Meg? Look, I just rewatched 2018's uh, The Meg uh, a couple days before seeing uh, Meg 2, and, you know, you go into these movies and... If you know what you're getting into, there's enough there to have a good time, you know? You're looking for uh, the generic uh, action hero characters, the generic uh, scientist characters, the generic uh, stereotypical uh, antagonist characters who, uh, who you know, you won't uh, shed a tear over if they get eaten, and then you get massive creatures uh, who are, you know, gobbling people up and causing massive amounts of damage. And the first Meg, it delivered all of that, you know? It wasn't high art. It wasn't even necessarily a great, uh, you know, B, uh, B movie with uh, with sharks. But it delivered exactly what you thought it was going to do, and I appreciate that. And I was looking for pretty much more of the same. Once again, if you're going into Meg to the Trench about a giant shark and expecting it to be a serious deep dive on, you know, the uh, about you know the, the meaning of life or something like that, then Clearly, you went into the wrong movie because you, all you're looking for, you should be looking for, is you know, uh, you know, sharks eating people, people punching sharks, you know, shooting sharks or whatever, uh, and you get that, you do get that, and you get even more than that because there's other uh, sea creatures in here besides just uh, the Meg and Megs, uh, Gerald. Um, you got these. Uh, kind of cool uh, amphibious uh, creatures uh, that we see in the trailer, which, by the way, the trailer about with the uh, the flashback to uh, the Meg eating a eating a T Rex. Yeah, of course that's just the pre-title uh, shot, and that doesn't come back into anything again. It's a cool trailer shot. Don't get me wrong, but in the movie, yeah, it really doesn't bring anything into the movie, into anything else. But, you know, that's just to set the tone, you know, it's a massive, massive shark, and you do get that. You get that kind of, uh, of creature action in here. Uh, I'll get into it uh, a little bit later, but they could have done more of it, uh, specifically why, uh, that's, uh, getting more into spoiler territory, uh, with this, but, um, yeah, but yeah, there, uh, there's, the, the creature action is, Satisfactory. We'll just put it that way. It's satisfactory. You get what you came for with that kind of action scene, and you know, it, it doesn't go above uh, beyond, which is a bit of a disappointment. But it doesn't give you less uh, for the most part. And I think on that scale alone, it serves its purpose. Now, the flip side, the other side of that is the characters. You know, how do the human characters uh, they, they fil filter in on this. Uh, you know, Jason Statham as, uh, as he plays basically the same kind of character he plays in most all of his movies, and he does it well. The rest of the other characters, however, they are, you know, they're the kind of disposable, um, cliche characters that you come to expect from this kind of movie. And again, 
they don't uh, they don't go below that, which is uh, uh, for the, I mean again for the most part there's one uh, you know. I guess we'll call it a surprise uh, villain reveal, even though it's not much of a uh, surprise. And, uh, you know, the who's behind it all, and it's someone we've never seen before, and we don't get developed that much at all, which is, you know, fine. They're there to be the stereotypical antagonist. And, again, it's nothing more, nothing less. And that's, you know, you can view that as a disappointment, or you can view it like me as like, okay, I got what I paid for. That's that's about it. Um so, yeah, there is that to be said about this movie. I don't, you know, yeah, I can't really say that much about uh, in, you know, in praise of any of these characters. I can't say anything, you know, that negative about them because, like I said, these are the kind of characters that um, you go into this kind of movie and they perform their roles. Let's put it that way. They perform their roles as this genre of movie kind of dictates. And they do it satisfactory. That's just kind of the way I can, uh, I can say it. So, uh, you know, ironically, there's the, the, all the other things that I kind of want to talk about are um, spoilers at the, this point. So, uh, at this point, I'll just say if I was going to give Meg to the Trench a, uh, a letter grade, I would say I would give it a um, B. Solid B. You know, B for B movie, because, you know, it did... It did just enough to uh, to satisfy what I was looking for from it, but nothing else. So, those are my. That's all I got. That's what my. Those are my spoiler-free thoughts on Meg to the Trench. Now let's get into some spoiler talk as to certain uh, plot developments and character arcs that may seem familiar to you and where you may have seen them before. Um, I mean, first and foremost, yes, they mentioned it in the movie, but. You know, just because you call out what you're borrowing doesn't mean that it's necessarily good because oh, I forget the guy's uh, name, but uh, the the one uh, black character from uh, I believe it was in the previous movie, he you know his shtick is he's got a survival pack in a, in a backpack that he carries around with him, and um, you know at first it's like okay when they're count cornered in the. Uh, in the supply closet or whatever, and he pulls out, all right, I got pepper spray, I got a taser. It's like, okay, that's interesting. And then, all right, you're going to pepper spray, and then I'm going to taser. It's like, all right, they go through it, that's fine. Then later in, uh, later on, he pulls out a, a 50 cal uh, Desert Eagle, and he says, oh, with poison, uh, with poison tip bullets, just like Jaws 2. It's like, yes, we call that your Jaws 2 thing. But A, if you had that the whole time, why didn't you uh, uh, use that before? I feel like that would be your first choice. Uh, for this, but, you know, whatever. Uh, but uh, in addition to that call-out, you get the the whole, you know, the final blow of the movie where, you know, the Mega Meg or whatever, the biggest Meg they ever seen, is, you know, trawling around. It's about to, you know, sit swimming towards the help, the helpless people, the guy trying to rescue the other guy from the crashed helicopter, and Jonas takes the broken rotor or whatever that's, you know, very, very spear-like and starts splashing the water to get his attention and, you know, goes through him and it's like, all right, come to me and then, it, you know, it, you know, it stabs the shark. That's reminds me so much of the climax of Jaws 2 where, you know, Brody is, you know, splashes the water to get the shark's attention and he works it in so he can bite the, the electrical cable to, uh, to explode him, basically. So, yes, you call that Jaws 2 as, you know, that's what you're doing, but... Again, that doesn't necessarily make it good that you're ripping off Jaws 2, because really, if you're only going to rip off Jaws, you know, only, the first one's the only real one to, to rip off, frankly. Um, and also, um, aside from those, there's actually a couple of interesting callbacks uh, uh, things here. Again, uh, weird that, you know, they, I guess it makes a certain amount of sense, but we're weird that, uh, you, know, you know, there's major plot elements from two different sequels to major uh, creature, uh, both Spielberg directed, uh, both uh, the sequels to Spielberg directed uh, creature flicks. One being, you know, Jaws 2 being a sequel to Spielberg's Jaws, and then we have a couple of callbacks to, um, and, and similarities to The Lost World Jurassic Park, um, where, you know, are group two groups basically the heroes and the villains. The heroes are the researchers going down into the trench to research 
uh, the various life forms that are in there, including Megs. And then you got the villains who are going into this, you know, again, quote unquote, lost, lost world to uh, to profit from it. You know, they're mining rare earth elements uh, from from this ridge, and uh, that is, you know, very reminiscent of Lost World, where you know you've got the expedition who goes to the island to, you know, plunder the resource, whereas you know Hammond, that our hero group with E. e. Malcolm, they go into uh, observe and catalog the the, uh, the dinosaurs there. Uh, and also, there's a cheeky little um, visual callback to Lost World near the end, where uh, our two heroes are trying to get on the helicopter, and um, the uncle character, or whatever, he uh, he looks over, and these these amphibious uh, lizard things are running towards them through the tall grass, just like the raptors did in Lost World, going towards the uh, uh, the people, uh, and you know that was a you know blink and you miss it kind of callback, but I was like, oh, that's kind of fun, uh, so. But again, it's kind of, you know, there's a certain amount of symmetry where a sequel to a creature feature is ripping off or putting in callbacks to other sequels to other uh, creature features. So uh, there's that interesting thing to be said. And my last kind of thought that I wanted to, you know, kind of touch on this is what drags this movie down, and I feel like it makes it less than the original Meg, is I feel like... Uh, well, first of all, you know, you've got the characters who were pivotal, or set up to be pivotal things in, at the end of the first movie, and then are unceremoniously, they have a flat, you know, the screen comes up, oh yeah, they died, you know, in between films here. Yeah, we, you, know, you got so invested in their future after that, yep, they're gone. So, that was, you know, take your pick on how many, you know, sequels you've seen do that. But, um, it feels like there's several scenes that are missing from this movie that probably got lost on the end of the room floor and they really should have kept them in there. Maybe they're trying to, you know, cut it down to keep it into, um, well, I think, as I recall, this movie's just under two hours uh, long and they had to cut things, but some of these scenes, like, you can, uh, I feel like there's, a, there, as I recall, there's, you know, minute 50, it's an hour 56 of this movie. You had four minutes to play with to, uh, to, uh, can you stay under two hours if that was their mandate? You could have put in a couple of these extra scenes. One in particular is the reveal of the gigantic octopus, which, I mean, maybe they didn't want to dwell on it just because, you know, we've seen, you know, giant tentacle monsters, CG tentacle monsters, I mean, maybe the, the, the Kraken from, uh, you know, Pirates 2, Jumpman's Chest, uh, kind of, you know, ca killed the vibe on that, but, you know, if it, it's, this movie's all about, you know, people reacting to, oh, man, that's a big shark or whatever. And then there's no scene where people react to, oh, that's a big octopus. And it's like, you know, the, pe the, the people on, like, the boat where the guy's, you know, trying to propose, and then his, I guess, you know, his fiance, his then fiance gets, you know, taken off the boat, and then they talk. So I was like, okay, they didn't get a big reaction to that, fine. You know, we never see the uh, the octopus in the trench uh, again after he takes off the hyperventilating, you know, uh, the Comic-Con guy or whatever. Uh, and then, you know, he starts attacking alongside the uh, the mechs or whatever, and, you know, people get grabbing people off the, the pier or whatever, and it's like, not even our heroes get a, oh man, what the heck is this kind of thing, you know? It's... It feels like there was, there had to have been a scene where they reacted to that, and then that just got cut somewhere along the line. I'm like, why? Why would you do that? And then we're supposed to get a big, you know, cheering moment when, um, you know, one of the Megs, I think it's the, what was it, Dai Chi, the, the, the Meg that was in captivity or whatever, um, you know, he comes in and, you know, eats the, he kills the octopus or something, and it's like, First of all, that would have been amazing if they had built up that, you know, conflict throughout the entire movie, and, you know, they didn't build up at all, frankly. Uh, and two, it's like, they built up this whole thing where, you know, the uncle character, he's trying, he'd been, you know, working with this captive Meg to train him to, you know, come to me and, you know, uh, or go away, uh, or don't attack me side kind of thing. We get a little, barely a payoff, you know, in the, uh, in the... Uh, near the end, but after everything's said and done, but how cool would it have been if, you know, when, because I mean, he gets dragged underwater by the, uh, by the shark, uh, by the octopus or whatever, and I mean, he drops the bomb, how cool would it have been if he's like, 
oh man, I remember I had this thing. Let me call uh, call for you know shark attack or whatever. And then you know the shark comes in and swoops in and saves him. It's like that would have been amazing. I feel like there had to have been a, a a version of that scene that they shot like that. But then that just got dropped at the last minute. It's like that's just such a missed opportunity. That's why uh, I you know I feel like this is less than the original Meg because. Yes, it gives you uh, no, no more than what, uh, it doesn't give you any less than what you're coming in for, but it could have given you so much more on some of these things, and that's just a, a, such a disappointment uh, in, my, in my eyes. So, I don't know. What did you think of uh, Meg to the Trench? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Uh, what about my analysis? Do you agree? Disagree? Did I miss anything? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate whatever audience I can get. Uh, be sure to look for my next movie review, which, uh, because of the uh, changing the schedules, uh, with you know, as affected by the uh, writer strike in various studios, my next movie review, which will actually be for Blue Beetle, which comes out August 18th. Uh, I'm also look for my channel. I've been I'll be doing a full uh, overall se uh, season review of Marvel's Secret Invasion, uh, which should be coming out here shortly. As well as we're getting close to the end of uh, the se season two of Star Trek: Strange Worlds. I'll be doing a full season uh, recap of that as well. And if you like this video or any other video on my channel, please give me a like, share, and especially subscribe. I would very much appreciate it. Again, thank you so much for watching. Just remember, there is nothing new under the sun. And yes, you have seen it before.